Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Tis the time for spooky celebrations, but I have yet to hear one of the spookiest named singers of all time, Rob Zombie. However, I do have this leftover from childhood. It was really an impression that Rob Zombie was probably super evil, but I didn't know at the time that sometimes evil can sound really good. So let's get to it. Okay, I know he just opened his mouth to sing a word, but I have to immediately give you some first impressions, which are not what I was expecting. Even thinking, okay, this guy's gonna have this evil, heavy sound. The music had a lot more techno influence, and I, I'd read industrial somewhere before, and I, I didn't know how to fit that into my idea of what he might sound like. I get it now. There definitely feels like there's an industrial element to it. Uh, it has so much pitch bending in it and a lot of sounds that feel edgy, but edgy and then shifted. It's very, very interesting. Just all of the different sounds that make up this sort of instrumental intro. That feels like a very old synth. And such a driving beat and then I feel like I'd be hopping in a club to this. Like, what is that sound? That oh, it's like a weird frog. <laughs> I'd be in a car. The lighting is so interesting. Well, so obviously he has a ton of drive to the sound and you have some distortion in, in there as well. Like it very much mimics the sort of distortion I'll hear on an electronic guitar, electric guitar, excuse me. And he is not playing with a wide range of sound at all. He's just playing with delivering um, very focused lyrics with a lot of aggression behind them. Uh, but it's not just... It's not just aggression. There's a better word for it. Uh, I think drive is where we're gonna we're gonna stick to right now. But I think maybe I'll come up with a better word by the end. Let's go back. It's also fascinating to listen to where they're dropping out the instruments, allowing space for his voice here. They have to have somewhere to go with the sound, right? So we're gonna probably get all of them together in a chorus. But right now, in order to have a place to expand to, whenever his voice comes in the instruments get much, a lot of them drop out. Right. You just got percussion in him there. Man. I also think that there's a lot of elements of grunge in his sound. It's like he's got a lot, there's a certain, a little bit of a Lane Staley in his tone, um, a little bit of Kurt Cobain as well, but only if they had a lot, yeah, a lot more drive and energy really behind the sound. A lot of times in grunge, there's a certain um, sort of falling back and, uh, there's definitely less energy, even though the sound sometimes requires a lot of energy to produce. The overall feeling of a sound often is going to be a little bit more laid back. Uh, not always, 
often. And then with him, that's it's just very much more edgy, edgy drive. I like these are, are good adjectives, I think, for this right now. By the way, if you're with me in live premiere chat, please give me some more adjectives. I think we should see if we can find the perfect description for his voice by the time we're done analyzing. One other thing to notice in here is how the voice is being layered. We definitely have at least a double. I'm guessing we have another one on there of his voice, and that helps actually to give it a little extra push through. I like that percussion expansion here too. Ooh, total drop. That that car belongs in a haunted house somewhere. But it's so fascinating the way that they're playing with different colors and layering of different images in this music video. Um, I know that Rob Zombie went on to be a, a very successful film director in the horror genre. However, I've never seen anything by him because I just don't watch horror movies um, because I get nightmares really easily. So <laughs> seeing the way that he's playing with visuals in this is really fascinating to me, and especially in the, the coloration. And it feels like it's playing with my perception of reality. Pretty cool. I, I can see how this would develop into... Uh, just a huge career. <laughs> I'm getting shivers because the sounds are so crunchy like, and they're in different parts of the headphones. You guys, if you haven't tried to listen to this song in headphones, I highly recommend it. I do have uh, in the about section of this video, I have a link that you can go to that has a bunch of different headphones that I recommend. And uh, it's really cool to experience this in the headphones right now because it almost feels like somebody's right beside me like chewing uh, freshly broiled kale you know that makes like this incredible crunchy sound and it actually makes me want to shiver and, and pull my sh my shoulders up because <laughs> the sound is so crunchy and so clear and it feels so close but then switching to the other ear <laughs> this part <laughs> that's a really cool placement ah! It's so fascinating to me. Now that I'm starting to get into this more, I think that they're experimenting a ton with textures, sound textures everywhere. And uh, that is one of the things that if you ever work on composing or orchestration, you have to really get into because you have all these classical instruments that all have uh, different kinds of textures they can bring to sound. And if you're going to be having if you're going to be having so many instruments playing at once, you need to learn how to use those to create different kinds of layers of textures and uh, create uh, different feelings, different uh, sort of primal responses from a person listening to music. And with contemporary music in particular, we've gained so much access to tons of sounds that weren't there before. Right? The digital age, we can make our own software instruments now. And in this case, I think that they're playing with this just, it almost feels like it's this a layered cake and they give us little sections of it at different times. And then sometimes they'll give us the whole shebang all at once and it feels very wide and very satisfying. Then at other times they're like, we'll focus just on this flavor for a moment or maybe 
focus just on that that crunchy crust. I feel like that crunchy crust was probably the section that uh, made me shiver a little bit. It's fascinating, the give and the take of texture throughout so far. I'm gonna go back a little bit and just appreciate that more. <laughs> I think that's my favorite part so far. Right, that way that, that space just in the back was really cool there. There's so many moments when they're adding and taking away instruments in here. It, it is so deliberately done like this and it keeps it very, very fresh. Uh, I really appreciate though that his voice has so many layers of texture that he's consistently keeping there. His voice is actually functioning more like an instrument in this song than voices often do in other songs. Voices often are not just delivering lyrics, but there's this like whole emotional journey that a voice is going through. And his voice is keeping, uh, it's uh, a very similar sound throughout the whole time. It is direct. It has got that uh, ever-present distortion, drive, and he isn't going again very, very high or very low. Instead, it's sort of saying in this like one layer or maybe a few layers of the cake but because you have that distortion in there and you have the lyrics there's also a really clear pitch that we're getting it all the time from his voice there's multiple layers so instead of getting like one bit of icing like we've got a, a pretty big chunk of the cake whenever his voice is in that gives it a lot more feeling overall Oh my gosh, I just realized something. So I thought that Dracula was gonna be some version of Dracula, but Dracula is his car. I didn't, I, so I knew I had some sort of relation to drag racing, but I honestly didn't know what drag racing was even before. So I had to go look that up on Wikipedia, thank you. Um, so I get it, his car is like a, a drag racing car, but it's got a drag and it's playing off a track. Okay, got it. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> and that's why it's in the back of his Dragula. Reading through the lyrics, because I did not put those two together before, I have to say I was a little bit lost, but I also thought, whoa, this is like some deep poetry. <laughs> so awesome. Gosh, I feel like like I'm on drugs or something in this song. The different uh, chapters in there, one of them almost felt like it was underwater for a bit, but then the colors flashing by, it's just, this, this is, wow. I don't, this song is something else. <laughs> Take it right, it sounds like you're in some sort of underwater uh, auditorium. It definitely, there's some sort of filter on there that makes it feel like the, some of the sounds are from far away. A little distorted. And then the pitch bin. Wah! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I totally relate to that face. <laughs> I I feel like a child right now. I the the faces and excitement that they have is that is exactly what I'm experiencing. Good on Rob Zombie for knowing that that would be 
the reaction of people like me. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Creepy, yeah. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that siren back there and the way that we dropped out so many so sounds other than right, some underlying percussion and the siren sound in his voice there, that makes it even creepier. One of the reasons that his voice still has so much presence in the chorus when we have so much more of that sound added back in, that's like our full cake moment essentially, is because he has a double that's an octave lower. It makes it feel beefier and that really helps you with sounds that are so reliant on textures like this it can be really hard to keep a voice poking through. If you've added so many different layers, but you need to leave some space for just the voice, often the voice will get muddled still. It's very, very hard on the mixers, on the masters, and, and having that layer underneath uh, really brings a lot of presence back into a voice. On your back, I can never die. The there you go. Man, this music video is trippy. I just, it has so many references, I think, to other horror movies or, and I'm, I'm completely missing them once again because I don't really watch horror movies. And it's, <laughs> the coloring and the shifting in it, it makes me mesmerized. It makes me feel like I'm falling down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> that was bitch of it. I'm trying to turn on. You can really clearly hear that lower portion now in that section. Back one more time. The way that these sounds are are panned left and right again, I this is such a crazy sonic experience inside of headphones. So just uh, it it would be a really incredible experience with speakers surround sound as well. But I gotta say, um, the way that it feels so close and so disturbing at the same time, it, it's a, it gives me a bit of heebie jeebies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Whoa. Really? Applause at the end? Oh my gosh. So here it almost sounds like you got put through a filter again, kind of like similar to the moment where we had that underwater thing. But we have so few other instruments surrounding at this point that we get to really hone in on what that does to a voice. Also, it's probably a slightly different kind of filter.
It's almost ironic. I have the word that I want to use to describe his voice. It is impelled. If you don't know the meaning of that, go check it out in the dictionary. I love the extra drive and urgency there is. And I have to say thank you so much to our patrons for this selection. It really opened my mind. Patrons, I adore you so much that for this Halloween season, we are releasing a whole bunch of extra spooky analysis for you. So if you guys want access to that, go check out our Patreon and may you fall more in love with music every day.